Hello, I'm Paula Farmer, and I'd like to share with you one of my favorite memories and life lessons, which took place while I found myself attending the Janice Mir Katani School of Organizing. It's not a real thing, but it should have been. As with many things that are calls to action where Jan was concerned, they're usually born out of robust conversations had with friends or family over a good meal. The new year of 2017 was no different as a small group of us sat around discussing the upcoming inauguration of our then new president, Donald Trump. The chronic injustices towards women were coming to light as his accusers continued to come forward and speak out to the media. Jan knew that we as women and Glide as a community could not stay silent. There was talk of a protest march happening, but the details were still vague. Jan turned to me and said, we have to organize. I immediately grabbed my phone and started taking notes. And she had me transcribe these words. This is solidarity, a statement against all the values that the president will negate. So we want to have everyone in the community join us to stand up for equality, justice, accountability, a woman's right to choose, LGBTQ rights, and so much more for which we have fought for so long. We cannot allow injustice to prevail. We as a community will continue to fight for our rights, freedom, justice, equality, and humanity for all. Now, by the end of that conversation, I had fired off an email to the church leaders to make an announcement that we would be organizing Glide to March. Now, having organized the Pride contingent for many years, I felt pretty comfortable with bringing our community together, but little did I know, and later what I find out, that grassroots organizing for causes is altogether a different animal. The San Francisco Women's March was the first of its kind that would be running simultaneously in solidarity with local marches worldwide as the National March in Washington was also taking place. The local organizers were also very new to navigating City Hall to get all the proper permits and security on such a in such a short turnaround. So Jan had reached out to them to lend a hand using her decade long connections. We had three weeks to apply to participate, to mobilize our membership, to organize community building and awareness activities, to create a glide specific safety plan, and a myriad of other co um, considerations that were out of our control, but that we would certainly figure out. It was Jen, it was Betty Wong, it was the Women's Artists and Empowerment Group, and we were all in the midst of flurry of emails with the church and phone calls, and we pulled our community together for a successful march. We also involved all of the congregational life groups and programs at Glide. The Glide staff was a major support, and the church members all came to lift our uh, voices in meaningful ways for them to participate in stamping out injustice against women everywhere. We gathered in the sanctuary on Saturday, January 22nd, in that late January day, to tell our stories together, to sing songs, and march together through the Tenderloin down to City Hall to join the masses. Glide had organized a trolley as well to assist not just our community, but anyone along the way who needed help making it down the route to be able to participate and lift their voice. We listened to an amazing lineup of dynamic speakers together before stepping off in protest with chants and women and allies and our trans sisters. And we were all openly advocating for change. And then there was Jan in that crowd, sporting a pussy pink hat and a bright yellow glide security jacket so that we wouldn't lose her in the crowd. When we had made it almost to the end of the route, we pulled out of the parade and stepped into a street side cafe to watch the remaining contingency go by. And the procession passed us. It was, it was um, really amazing to reflect on the outcomes of what the protest did for our community, but also for us as individuals. We talked once again, over shared meal about why this work mattered to each of us and vowed to keep the conversation going. The work was not yet done. So a few takeaways I have from the Janice Mirakatani School of Organizing. Make your presence known by letting them know you're ready to work. Collaborate with all types of people and organizations to achieve your goals. Everyone is an expert at something. 
utilize your people resources intentionally to make things happen. Be mindful of your financial resources as you find angel investors who are committed to and believe in your work. Take care of your entire community while focusing on the cause. Work with conviction, compassion, and unconditional love. Well, Janice Mirkatani was a powerhouse and a light. She will be sorely missed tremendously by those who she touched and she left a legacy that is a blueprint for how each of us should take care of one another always. I love me some Janice Mirkatani and she will and always be glad. Thank you for listening.